Planning for Social Security, what's the average Social Security check that people are receiving right now? What's the maximum that you could get? I've got those facts and details and more coming up right here. My name is Mike Bernard, I'm the host of The Wise Money Show, I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. Social Security used to be part of the three-legged stool. Now this is like, you know, going way back when, but the big idea with retirement was in order to have a solid retirement and, you know, a, something stable, stable enough to sit on, you would have Social Security being one leg of the stool, you would have your pension as another source of income, the other leg of the stool, and then the third leg of the stool was going to be your retirement savings and drawing the dividends or, or income off of that. And that would be enough to support you in retirement. Guys, for most of us, this is the two-legged stool. And, and, and as you can imagine from this analogy, it doesn't, you know, it's not stable for a lot of people, right? And uh, pensions have all but gone away for everyone except for government employees. And, uh, and we know the facts about how much people have saved up on average for retirement. And so Social Security, regardless of how much you've saved up, even if you still have a pension, Social Security is an, is an extremely important piece of your retirement plan. So, so are you going to be able to optimize it? What can you expect from Social Security? Well, we all need to expect that it's going to change. We know it will change. And I don't know if benefits will be cut or if more of it will be taxable. My guess is we will be paying higher FICA taxes and they will delay retirement, full retirement ages. That's my guess. We don't know right now, but we know it's going to be changing. We know that most people draw their Social Security as soon as they can. And we also know that most people do not optimize their Social Security. So before just knee jerk saying, I'm going to I'm going to draw as soon as I can, actually pausing and coming up with a strategy that maybe is, re is claim as soon as you can. Maybe it delays a little bit, but, but most people, we, we know, we know most people do not optimize and they need to. What else do we know about Social Security so that you can plan ahead for this important piece of your retirement? Well, we know what the average payment is. Now, your, the amount of payment that, that you receive is going to be based on your work history and how much income you've had and how much FICA you've paid um, and when you draw. But right now, as of February 2023, the average benefit that's being paid out right now is $1,694. That's what it is. Now, in my experience, that's an average for folks that are still in their 80s and 90s. Back when, you know, based on their work history, it was much lower because they made less money, therefore they paid less into FICA. And so my, I wouldn't say that that's the average that people are, are claiming when they start today. That's the average that, uh, of people that are, are collecting it right now. And just imagine the difference in wage history for someone that is 87 years old compared to someone that is 65 right now. How much, you know, because of inflation, the difference in what, in, in what they earn. Now, it also, this average can be deceiving because a lot of people do, as soon as they turn 62, adjust their hours and, and work less so that their income is below the threshold in which they can claim Social Security and not have it be penalized. And what that means is they permanently lock in a lower Social Security for that short-term enjoyment of being able to reduce the amount of hours and reduce, basically go part-time. And guys, if that's your strategy, if that if that works for you, fantastic. But I, a lot of people are making that decision and it's not the right strategy for them because when they're unable to work part-time or when that part-time income goes away, now they're stuck with a permanently reduced social security. And so this average, this average of, of you know, just under 1,700 social security payment includes those individuals as well. In my opinion, folks that are that have a good work history and that have been uh, that are retiring in you know right around now, um, their average is around 2,000, 2,200, something something like that. But you've got to look at it for your situation. We also know that Social Security there is a cost of living adjustment every single year. Now, recently in a video where I was talking about this, I said Social Security goes up every single year by a factor. Well. Sometimes that factor is zero, okay? So you know, they, the comment folks kind of tore me up about that one, but you, you guys know what I mean. Every single year, based on the CPI, W, CPI, 
urban, uh, urban, there's, there's an adjustment to your social security for, to account for the, uh, the, the cost of living going up for inflation. Okay. And it doesn't line up perfectly with inflation. And, and, and so it's, it's an imperfect system, but there, it is adjusted every single year. Take a look here at the past few years on what that cost of living adjustment has done. Guys, if you look at the full history, there are years where it does not go up at all, okay? We saw that in 2015, we saw that in 2009 and 2010, so two straight years where Social Security did not go up at all. I don't have the actual average of this, and of course we've got high inflationary times and no inflationary times. I would guess the average is somewhere between three and 4%, which over you know 50 years, that's about the average of what inflation is. So when you're planning for retirement, you're trying to look for income sources that slay as many of the three retirement dragons as possible, okay? One is longevity. Will this income or payment, will this resource, this asset, whatever you wanna call it, last as long as you need it to? And that's number one. Number two, will it keep up with inflation? Because we know at other times, inflation sort of this silent uh, this, this silent uh, killer. Uh, right now, it's very, very clear and apparent. Um, so that's the second one, will it keep up with inflation? And then third, can it sustain market volatility? Or if the market's volatile, will the income decline or stop or go away? Social Security, for the most part, is the only one that, uh, that, that slays all three of those dragons, right? It will last as your entire life, whether it's short or long. It does have an inflation adjustment component, this, this cost of living adjustment every single year. And then third, you know, market going up, market going down, market going sideways, your social security is consistent. And so, so that's what we know. That's the second thing that we know about social security that you can plan on. There's a cost of living adjustment. I wouldn't assume that it's gonna grow three to 4% every year. And I certainly wouldn't assume it's gonna grow over eight or 9% every single year. We average more conservative or we project out more conservative, two, two and a half percent is what I'd typically recommend. And finally, the final thing that we know is what's the maximum amount of Social Security? And you might say, well, can I sign up for that? Well, the maximum Social Security is based on you hitting the Social Security, the, the FICA contribution, the, the, the Social Security portion of FICA contribution limit every year for a certain number of years. Your Social Security is based off 35 years of work history, and if for 35 years of work history, you paid in, the, you earned the maximum amount for Social Security and you paid in the maximum amount of Social Security tax, then you'll get the maximum amount of your Social Security if you delay your, your, your benefit. So the maximum amount that someone could earn right now at age 62 is $2,500. That same person, the maximum amount if they delayed until 70, $4,500. $4,500, guys, and I didn't do the math. I'm a geek, so I'm sort of surprised I didn't right now, but that's $2,000 a month for the rest of your life. $24,000 a year for the rest of your life. What's what's the delta on that? Uh, it's gotta be a half million dollars. You know, that like that's a, that's a big, big, big difference between drawing early or delaying, right? And so maximizing Social Security, yes, has to do with, did you pay the max, how much did you earn? And how long, how many years did, did you earn that? So are you, have you paid in the maximum amount into Social Security? But it also deals with when are you gonna draw? And right now, they're talking about delaying this. They're talking about changing it. I don't see it happening in the near term. But right now, delaying your Social Security until 70 will give you, regardless of your work history, will give you the maximum benefit in your Social Security. So regardless of your situation, Social Security and planning for it and optimizing it is going to be important and critical to your overall financial plan. And truthfully, it could make the difference between a hundred thousand dollars, couple hundred thousand dollars, depending on when you choose to draw it and what your strategy is. So work with your certified financial planner on that. Make sure that social security strategy fits within your full five factor retirement plan, which fits nicely into your six areas of your financial life. Your CFP can help you with that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, contact one on my team, find us online, cohorn.com. That's Corwin with K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well. Or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go on and take your next wise step in your financial life.